Hypotheses have been made regarding the quasars as follows. The darkness below the podium is boiling. The eyes with the questions and inspection. Some behind glasses are cast out of the darkness. Just like the signals beamed from several light years away and received at the top of the observatory. Good. Based on the data of its redshift, Dr. Schmidt deducted that it is moving away from us at a recessional velocity of one sixth of light speed. Page three. Mm. I did put it in. In most cases, we would consider a stellar black hole as what is left from the gravitational collapse of a star. They fight, attract each other, and merge into a supermassive black hole to which the stars in the nearby galaxies will be eventually pulled by gravity... Page three. Oh, here it is. Did Kumar put it here for me? Then there was neither existence nor non-existence. There was neither the realm of space nor the sky beyond. Then there was neither death nor immortality. There was neither day nor night. Inside the quasars, there is a violent activity occurring that is close to a supernova. It devours stars. And the gas cloud turns into stars out of gravitational driving. Thus, a new star is born. It is a graveyard filled with corpses. As well as a cradle for new stars. That was a successful lecture, Kalabuna. Thanks for your rare compliment. I can't believe the first thing you do after the long absence is listening to my embarrassing speech. You see, this is not my thing. I'm still struggling with a word I should use in part three. Oh, but you know I won't pass up a good chance to sit in the audience. To be someone who can smile knowingly at the argument made by the lecturer, knowing full well the thinking process behind while staying close to other whispering opinions. This is the perfect spot for observations, like a perfect observatory from which we witness the events in the universe. <laughs> I'd rather not give a comment on your personal taste. Kumar, I think we should make some adjustments to the details of the following observation. Here's an idea. How about we put away the work for the moment? Forget those things. Just look at the stars. Simply fix your eyes on them. Uh, move over. The grass beneath me feels like pine needles. When you were away, Danny from the institution had paid a visit here. Based on his attitude, I may tell he was doubting my identity as a human. <sighs> If it goes on like this, we are likely to be kicked out of our own project. I've destroyed all the observation data of that special celestial body. At least through this, we can keep the observation method between you and me. Do 
the same. Have I done anything wrong? No. As a research student, you did an excellent job, though no more than I'd expect from a student of mine. That's just what we've been doing, isn't it? Hiding in the corners, doing research that completely has nothing to do with others. You know what? I'm a bit tired. Seriously. Tired of the pointless power struggles between these specks of stardust. We all know none of us could avoid the fate of being restored to the basic elements of the universe after we die. Never mind. It's not the first time it's happened. <laughs> I've never been welcomed on either side. Ah, uh, speaking of which... My parents. Yeah, I told you about them. They abandoned me because I had little so-called talent for Arcanum. And now they are showing remorse for what they have done. There's more. My stupid younger brother knew nothing about what happened to me. He didn't even recognize me. His own sister. You paid them a visit this time back in your hometown? Visit them? No, sweetheart. I went home to... to do many things except to hear some old people's apology. I've never cared about those things. I went there to deal with a little business, and it was done smoothly. So smoothly that I have taken care of everything there is to be done. Hmm? Calabona, if... If one day we can see that celestial body with our own eyes, or even touch it with our own hands, I will definitely... Kamar, what are you talking about? Thank <laughs> you.